welcome. Thank you for tuning into Talking Point. Uh, this one is going to be a special one. You've got a big listing happening in a few minutes from now, and then, of course, our conversation with market guests to understand what happens in this very, very busy event heavy week. Uh, but first up, Shweta Daptardar, Vice President of BFSI Ilara Securities, joins in to talk to us about uh, what you should do if you own Bajaj Housing Finance or whether you want to buy Bajaj Housing Finance. Hi, Shweta. I guess you've had a busy last few weeks. Uh, this is one of the biggest listings of our times, oversubscribed to the tune of 1% of India's GDP. Today, the stock is expected to get a 100% listing gain, which will take Bajaj Housing Finance to market cap to over a lakh crore of rupees. Uh, if one gets a 100% gap up and they've been lucky to get subscription, what do you recommend they do? And what happens to those investors who weren't lucky enough but were looking to buy Bajaj Housing Finance? Should they do it this morning? Good morning, Tamanda. Uh, so as you rightly pointed out, this is happening to be one of the biggest listing, especially in the housing finance space after a long time. So Bajaj Finance today uh, ranks almost second largest HFC in the space just after LIC Housing Finance with almost 970 or billion book as we speak. Uh, given the fact that the listing per se has been quite bumper and the initial market valuation which was touted to be around 59,000 to 60,000 odd crores would now almost reach 1 lakh odd crores as you rightly pointed out. It still maintains the attractiveness that is associated with the entire uh, uh, entire organization or the stock valuation for that matter. So at the 1 lakh uh, uh, valuations per se, you will see price to book somewhere closer to almost 4x trailing and closer to 3x uh, forward multiple. But even despite the premium valuations, we continue to believe that Bajaj Housing Finance will maintain its premiumization given the fact that it has a very strong management pedigree. It uh, functions on an omni-channel network system for its sourcing of customers. It is uh, having one of the best credit ratings today, which is AAA, which gives its benefit on the cost of funding. So we continue to believe there is lots to benefit to the investors. Uh, both, uh, you know, who would grab this uh, and best luck for those who would miss out. That was actually Samina, not Tamanna. She will talk to you in a minute from now. And of course, we can always sit here and talk about the strengths and the leverage that Bajaj Housing Finance will have from its uh, group companies. The fact that they have such a healthy book, the fact that they have about uh, 45 odd lakhs average ticket size, which is better than the industry. But one concern, apart from expensive valuations, that some may have is the fact they've got a high loan to value. Uh, number, which largely means the lender has a higher risk in case the asset price declines. Are you concerned about that? Do you feel like that is one area or the only negative that potentially could make an investor slightly more circumspect as the valuations continue to get stretched? To understand the product mix and the LTVs respectively. So if you look 58% of the Bajaj housing finance book is concentrated in home loans, which has higher LTVs. Now, 58% of your book, which is salaried home loans, has 86% of the customer base with a civil score of 750 plus. So there itself, the customer vulnerability is taken care of because you are focusing on mass affluent customer base. If you look at the LAP and the LRD profile, so LAP is another 10, 11% of the book. 19 to 20% is LRD, uh, as a percentage of your overall book, there, if you look at the LTVs, they have been restricted to 15%. So uh, if you look at the overall portfolio in perspective, so it is very much strong on the credit risk perspective, from the credit risk perspective, given that 86% of the customer base on the salaried home loan side has 750 plus civil score. All right, there we go, the countdown. Three, two, and one. Listing here for Bajaj Housing Finance, the big one. 
while the other two are sedate. But 118% upside for Bajaj Housing Finance on listing. 124. Now. <laughs> yeah, so 124% for Bajaj Housing Finance. This is this is stellar stuff. We just get the other two before we focus on Bajaj Housing Finance again. But just the pricing of the other two very quickly. 3% lower for Cross and 6% for Tollins. Not bad for Tollins, but just that it dwarfs comparison to the 130%. Uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite sad for a listing. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, this is just the first listing moment. I think we should just cut full frame for a few seconds to the pictures of Sanjeev Bajaj there and the Bajaj housing finance listing. They're still sitting there at the podium. I'm uh, still standing there at the podium, of course, uh, taking in all of those congratulations. This is... Uh, in that sense, a historical listing because yes, we are flush in the middle of IPOs, but quantity doesn't equal quality always. And this is a quality paper that's available. Shweta Daptar Dar with us. Shweta, hi, Tamanna here, and so great to speak with you this morning, uh, especially in all things Bajaj Housing Finance. Now, now that we have a number, at least initially, 160 rupees. Um, and you answered briefly the question of what should you do if you have allocation. I'm going to ask you that again now that we know it's 160, 130 percent up, 160 rupees for a 70 rupee share. What do you do if you didn't get allocation? By today, wait, wait for it to settle down. What should be the strategy there? Definitely, despite the bumper listing, the underlying tailwinds remain very positive and robust for the entire housing finance space, let alone be Bajaj housing finance. And look, we are talking about uh, almost 90, like I mentioned, 970 billion odd book, which is diversified across all the segments covering the entire housing finance spectrum. So be it housing loans, home loans, prime, affordable and salaried, be it LRDs, which is lease uh, rental discounting, loan against portfolio and even developer financing. Market is also not today factoring in the uh, the, the stable footing of real estate develop, uh, developer financing portfolio, which is back in reckoning. So there, there is lots to gain from housing finance stocks going forward. And it's just uh, the beginning for Bajaj housing finance. So one should wait for uh, the subscription and rather should jump into the stock with every correction, if, if there is any. Suppose there is no correction. I'm seeing 151 right now. Very quick, clear answer, Shweta, to my question. Right now, if you're sitting, you, you know, you got your refund, didn't get the allocation. Am I buying or am I not buying? You should be buying. Okay. Definitely buying. Okay. That's great. So what about other housing finance companies, which are also lifting on that wave? There's a revaluation, yes. re-rating of all of them. Which ones of those should I look at? Yes. So as you rightly pointed out, Bajaj Housing Finance listing is helping the wave to ride for other housing financiers as well. So like I said, you know, the biggest one, which is around 2,900 billion or book as we speak is LIC Housing Finance. We have PNP Housing Finance, which is around uh, 720 or billion book. Uh, but if you look at from the valuations perspective, so definitely despite Bajaj Housing getting listed at premium valuations, we have few other names like PNP PNB Housing Finance, Canfin Homes, which slightly better and relatively placed in the entire housing finance space. Like said, given the underlying trends being very positive, we continue to believe most of these housing financiers are going to ride the wave. And the key, differentia uh, the key differentiation between each of these names is going to be superior growth and earnings. So if you look at Bajaj Housing Finance, between FI 21 to 24, the company has clocked 33% AUM CAGR and as high as 56% earnings CAGR. So it is one of the most supreme growth-led entities with a diversified franchise. I would definitely place bets on diversified housing finance entities and uh, their PNB housing finance definitely fits the bill. You know, guys, just the valuation picture that Shweta was talking about at the IPO price, and we have those graphics by the way, so we'll put them up. At the IPO price, Bajaj Housing Finance was at 2.9 times. Uh, Avas, 3.1 times. Aptos, 3.6 times. Aadhaar, 2.9 times. PNB Housing, that she spoke about 1.8 times. Now, PNB Housing has gone up 3-4% today. So let's assume it's trading at around two times multiples, give or take a few, right? Bajaj Housing Finance is six times. So there is a significant premium that this one has over PNB. And granted, the nature of the franchise is different. And, and that is where the, the, the difference in valuation comes in. 
Shweta, the other question is, and uh, non-housing finance, are there other NBFCs which are better placed to buy into, or is your favorite clux of NBFC stocks, are, are they the housing finance companies? So we at Ilara Securities definitely take calls on credit and business cycles. So the current cycle, which is led by retail credit, definitely stands very strong for housing finance space and for gold financiers per se. So if you look at the tight liquidity conditions for banks, they definitely pave better uh, game and room for housing financiers and gold financiers to outperform. On the other hand, we have seen this cycle being very strong for wholesale financiers and power financiers, given the fact that asset quality pressures have stabilized for them for last two to three years. So in the entire NBFC finance Shweta, space... But... Shweta, allow us to just uh, interrupt for a minute because the Bajaj Housing Finance press conference is on. Let's cut across. I, I think this will, they'll start in a minute and we'll cut across to what Sanjeev Bajaj has to say, but Tamana, this is what dreams are made of, right? Of, of, a, of a business which started off as one company years back, it shows into insurance, that gone into consumer lending, mm. has now a mutual fund arm which is fairly large and developing, has a housing finance business which is listed. Uh, the journey of Sanjeev Bajaj over the last 15, 20 years has been remarkable. Exemplary. And it's it's not ending there, right? Yes, he it's says, not. He says that I want to be part of the financial needs of every Indian throughout that life cycle. Let's listen in, actually, to that Q&A. First one, your book is uh, very close to that 1 lakh crore mark, about 97,000 crores. Uh, three years CAGR 31%, five years CAGR 29%, much higher than what your peers have been doing. Uh, what I want to understand is that till when do you expect this kind of strong growth to continue? That is upwards of about 28 to about 31 percent. Uh, when does the growth start normalizing slightly? Or do you think this is the normalized growth for the business that you've been doing? Uh, and can you double that book in the next four years, just going by the growth that you've been doing so far? Uh, next question is on the NIM outlook. I just want to understand what kind of margins do you foresee yourself? Now that you're listed, you'll be able to share some numbers on that front. And as banks are seeing a drop in their CASA ratio, uh, down the line, do you expect that impact to come on your NIMs also? Because it's become costlier for you to raise funds from the banks also. In that case, what are the alternate measures in terms of the tweak to your borrowing mix that you're looking at? Final question. Uh, seven years, we've had uh, Bajaj Finance or Housing Finance listed. Uh, I understand there was certain amount of you know uh, input came, that came from the regulator as well. You have one of those two subsidiaries, the life insurance, general insurance arm. Um, the regulator there has been saying that uh, companies which complete 10 years should look at listing. Uh, which one out of those two uh, and by when uh, could we see uh, you know them getting listed, them coming public as well? Thank you so much. Let me just start first by thanking our shareholders, our investors, um, and everyone that's contributed uh, for uh, this listing today of Bajaj Housing Finance. We are truly overwhelmed by the response that we are seeing over the last couple of minutes. Uh, I'll take the question on growth, and then Atul will take the question on margin. Those are the two relevant ones. Um, we've had very strong growth, but this is in the background of a very strong, consistently growing economy. And if you look at uh, credit cycles in India, we expect steady credit growth at uh, 12 to 15 percent in the housing industry. And on the back of that, we are enthused that we can continue to grow strongly. The economy is showing uh, very strong uh, tailwinds, and that's what gives us this uh, comfort. Um, Atul will take the margin question. Uh, see, we are a variable rate company on a very asset side. The, our assets are variable, which are largely linked to a floating rate, which is linked to our cost of funds, uh, and the liabilities are also largely variable. So on a steady state basis, through the cycles, uh, mortgage companies generally have a steady state margin. So we do not expect any impact on margins from the listing, whether positive or negative, because that was uh, from a cost of fund perspective, because we had already been a highest rated domestic rated company and our cost of funds are relatively quite competitive compared to the market 
and with a variable rate asset size, the NIMS are likely to remain stable like in case of all uh, variable asset companies. On we do not see the credit deposit ratios, what the question you called out on if they are deteriorating further in terms of a mix. We have a healthy mix of uh, bank borrowings and the money market in our book and we expect it to continue. And on the last question, if uh, yeah, we are talking about Bajaj Housing Finance. That we'll take that another time. Okay, thank you so much. Hi, sir. Uh, Ankur Mishra from ET Now. Uh, first question to you, Mr. Bajaj, and I'll come for the second question later. Uh, I want to ask that now that shareholders, the, pro the prospective shareholders have become shareholders now, and they have rewarded with you the bumper list. Now, for them, what should they expect in next one to two years from Bajaj Housing Finance? Is there going to be any kind of a dividend? What kind of promises do you want to make for shareholders? Well, we've just listed uh, the company, as you said correctly, a few minutes ago, and uh, we are uh, thrilled with where we are. Uh, shareholders should expect uh, a business that grows with high quality, a high level of corporate uh, governance, that brings the right uh, blend of technology in uh, this particular business, and sustainable, sustained growth with uh, high focus on quality of the business and a diversified book is what we look forward to building. To you, Mr. Jan, I want to understand, you mentioned about the borrowing mix, uh, which is from banks as well as other options, but uh, with the kind of scrutiny and the new norms which is coming from Reserve Bank of India, can we expect some kind of change in terms of ratios, how will be borrowing? See, we borrow at a particular point of time looking at the market availability and also optimization of our ALM and optimization of our cost of funds. So there is no standard at a point of a time what happens. So the calls are taken by the treasury team uh, on the market scenario. Like I called out to the earlier question, we do not envisage given our rating and given the confidence of the lenders, which whether in the money market or in the banking space, have on the overall Bajaj and Bajaj housing finance uh, there. We do not expect the challenges to be there in raising the money because regulators requirement had been towards increasing risk weight to other category of companies, not the housing finance companies. So we don't expect a challenge in terms of maintaining the balance. Thank you. Uh, firstly, I want to congratulate uh, the dad for the listing. Uh, my question to you is, uh, Sanjeev, that uh, how do you assess the demand for affordable housing going because it has been lacking with the respect to premium housing? And um, do you see the rate cuts will have an effect on this? And also the, uh, uh, what is the plan for the promoter holding, uh, the long-term view? And my last question is that uh, the merger of HDFC Limited and HDFC Bank, has it reduced the competition intensity on ground? So I'll have Atul answer some of the operational questions, but let me say as promoters and as promoter group, uh, we are strongly supportive and highly confident on this business and uh, this company. Uh, we know as per listing requirements within three years, promoter shareholding has to come down to 75% and, and that is something that we will look to doing in the coming years. On affordable, your question, see, given India, in recent part, it is correct what you have called out, the premium housing growth had been higher than the affordable housing, but given very ground, strong government focus on housing for all, very strong schemes what we have seen from the budget what have come, and on the ground uh, demand from uh, aspiring India, we believe affordable housing finance or affordable housing demand would be far more in the coming years as we grow as we go from here. Uh, that is where on affordable uh, we are. Now, rate cuts will that, uh, so rate, rate cuts do not necessarily uh, tickle the demand up like we have not seen rate increases tickle down the demand. That's what we saw because. Again, it being a variable rate business, I think the borrowers and the people when they decide to buy a house, they know that the rates are subject to going up and down because it's a, in India it's a full variable or a floating rate mortgage is what we run. So it's a part of the cycle. Uh, generally decision for buying a house is not deferred or not pre pooned because of the pricing in our observation. HDFC still is present in the mortgage space. So from uh, they have changed the corporate entity from an HDFC limited. Now they do the mortgage business in HDFC bank. So the situation remains there and they remain uh, one of the largest players in the mortgage industry even today. Sir, Namaskar. 
मैं सौरभ पांडे जी बिजनेस मुंबई से सबसे पहले आपको ढेरों शुभकामनाएं आपकी कंपनी की शानदार लिस्टिंग पर मैं सवाल मुझसे बजाज से सर आगे बढ़ते हुए अगर कंपनी की ग्रोथ की बात की जाए किस तरह से आप जो है कंपनी का ग्रोथ देख पा रहे हैं और जिस तरह से आपने अपने स्टेटमेंट में कहा कि सभी को अपना घर मिलने का पूरा अधिकार है कैसा विजन आप आगे बढ़ते हुए देख पा रहे हैं सेक्टर की जो ग्रोथ रही है और जो हम कमिंग uh, ईयर्स में देखते हैं तो दिस इज लाइकली टू बी 12 टू 15 परसेंट विच इट सेल्फ इज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग हमारी ग्रोथ रही है हायर देन दैट इन दी लास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स इसकी कारण यह है इज वन इट्स अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ ए डिवर्सिफाइड बुक दैट वी हैव बिल्ट अक्रॉस मल्टीपल कस्टमर सेगमेंट्स सेकेंड इट इज द वे वी लेवरेज टेक्नोलॉजी एंड डेटा फॉर ए सीमलेस कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस um in taking on a home loan and uh, third is the focus of the management to build a good quality long term business so hamare hisab se these are all uh, ingredients that continue to be there uh, atul ji mera agla sawal aap se hai ki agar baat ki jaye category change ki to hum uh, home loan se developer loan par bhi focus rakh rahe hain to kis segment mein sabse zyada growth dekhne ki ummeed kar pa rahe hain देखिए हम चारों सेगमेंट जो मॉडगेज के बड़े सेगमेंट हैं चाहे वो होम लोन है या डेवलपर फाइनेंस है या लीज एंटल डिस्काउंट या लोन अगेंस्ट प्रॉपर्टी हम शुरू से ही सब सेगमेंट्स में रहे हैं और जो क्योंकि हम हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनी के तौर पर रजिस्टर्ड हैं हमारा डोमिनेंट पोर्शन ऑफ बुक एज अ रेगुलेशन विल बी होम लोन एंड कॉन्टीन्यूस टू बी होम स्टिल ऑल्सो होम लोन एंड विल कॉन्टीन्यू टू बी होम हाय सर नमस्ते मैं अनुराग सर मेरा सवाल सर जो करोड़ों रिटेल निवेशक हैं जिन्होंने आपके आईपीओ में सब्सक्राइब करा और उनको रिवॉर्ड भी मिला तो उनसे जुड़ा हुआ होगा सर उनको किस तरह का आप भविष्य से जुड़ा हुआ आश्वासन दे रहे हैं और आईपीओ के दौरान सर आपके द्वारा एक जो बात कही गई थी वो काफी लोगों ने पसंद की रिटेल निवेशकों ने भी पसंद की भविष्य की आप एच बनाना चाहते हैं बजाज हाउसिंग फाइनेंस को तो सर उस लक्ष्य के लिए जो ग्रोथ के टारगेट है आपके किस तरह के होंगे किस रफ्तार से आप बढ़ेंगे दूसरा सवाल सर जवाब के बाद तो उसमें मैं यही बोलूंगा कि जो रिटेल शेयर होल्डर्स आए हैं वी आर वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू दैम एंड हमारी कोशिश यही रही है टू बी टू बिल्ड ए हाई क्वालिटी बिजनेस गोइंग फॉरवर्ड एंड वी लुक फॉरवर्ड टू हैविंग यू विद अस एज लॉन्ग टर्म शेयर होल्डर्स लाइक यू बिन इन सो मेनी ऑफ अदर कंपनी सर दूसरा सवाल मेरा रहेगा हम जिस तरह से लिस्टिंग के दौरान कई सारे दिग्गजों ने कहा आपके बी आर एल ने कहा कि तीस साल बाद जो है ये एक बजाज ग्रुप का आई पी ओ आ रहा है तो उसको आप अपनी आपकी इंटरनल भावना किस तरह की है और सर इसके साथ साथ आपने अपने संबोधन में भी कहा कि हम एनविशास करते हैं कि हर भारतीय का एक फाइनेंशियल पार्टनर बनने का तो वो लेकर क्या प्लान है तो हम देखिए कि जो 30 साल का इंतजार रहा था वो भविष्य में इतना ज्यादा नहीं होगा जो कि निवेशकों को भी सर 30 साल तक इंतजार करना पड़ा अभी भविष्य के बारे में तो क्या बात कर सकते हो तो भविष्य में ही मालूम पड़ेगा बट येस वी आर ऑल वेरी थ्रिल्ड विद दिस लिस्टिंग आफ्टर थर्टी ईयर्स एंड लाइक विथ एवरी अदर बजाज कंपनी आर एम इज टू बिल्ड हाई क्वालिटी इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड वी होप दैट दी मार्केट विल रिक्नाइज दैट नहीं वेरी क्लियरली इन्वेस्टर्स की जो इंटरेस्ट और भरोसा रही है दिस इज वेरी हम्बलिंग फॉर अस वी आर नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड फॉर इट टू ओपन वेर इट डेट ये मैनेजमेंट पे और बोर्ड पे एडिशनल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी भी रखती है कि जिस तरह से हम पिछले सात सालों में एक क्वालिटी बिजनेस बिल्ड किए हैं उसी तरह वी मूव अहेड और एंड वी प्ले अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट रोल इन नॉट ओनली इन द हाउसिंग बिजनेस बट थ्रू दैट इन हेल्पिंग टेकिंग क्रेडिट अक्रॉस इंडिया इन द कमिंग ईयर्स मैम रेपो रेट का बढ़ना और घटना पूरे कंट्री के मैक्रो से रहता है और कॉस्ट ऑफ फंड्स और बैंकिंग सिस्टम का जो प्राइसिंग रहता है जो हमको लोन मिलते हैं या जो हम आगे लोन दे पाते हैं वो इससे लिंक रहते हैं आज का जो भी डिमांड रहता है जैसे मैंने पिछले वाले क्वेश्चन में भी बोला था क्योंकि हमारा जो एसेट साइड है वो भी वेरिएबल होता है जो हमारी कॉस्ट ऑफ फंड से लिंक होता है 
और कस्टमर्स को भी जो घर बनाता है क्योंकि वो लॉन्ग टर्म कमिटमेंट है उनको मालूम है कि थ्रू द साइकिल कभी रेट ऊपर जाते हैं और नीचे जाते हैं और क्योंकि रोड रेट लिंक होते हैं जैसे रेट ऊपर जाता है नीचे जाता है इसका आ, हमने डिमांड पे बहुत ज़्यादा अंतर पड़ते नहीं देखा है और ऐसा ही और अभी वैसे भी जो जितना हम सुन रहे हैं या पढ़ रहे हैं उसके हिसाब से तो अभी रेट आने वाले समय में कुछ समय में जब भी होगा तो नीचे ही जाने की आशा है और ऊपर जाने की तो आशा नहीं है Hi sir, uh, this is Subhana Sheikh. I work with NDTV Profit. Uh, this is the first listing of uh, you know by Bajaj Group in nearly 30 years. Just wanted to understand uh, when can we see another listing, and uh, Bajaj Housing Finance is you know uh, playing on India's large uh, residential real estate sector. So just wanted to understand with rates, interest rates expected to come down soon. How do you plan to evolve your business going forward? Well, a number of our companies have grown uh, with capital that has come from uh, the parent companies. As and when a business is ready to go to the markets, uh, we take it there, and uh, that's where we are today with Bajaj Housing Finance. Uh, when the next is, who knows? Hopefully, not in 30 years, but less. But who knows? Atul, you take the next one. On the rate of interest, uh, again, like I called out, because the market rate goes up and down, so there is no difference in the demand and profitability, because both sides need to go up and down, so we do not have the rate of interest. Hi, sir. Uh, Sanjay Singh, Bajaj Housing Finance. Sir, what do you think देखिए जो हमारा कंसिस्टेंट काम रहता है कि हम टेक्नोलॉजी द्वारा अपनी प्रोडक्टिविटी बढ़ाने की कोशिश करते रहें जिससे जो हमारी ऑपेक्स जो नेट इनकम रेशियोज हैं कम आती रहें और पिछले दो तीन साल में हमने उनको कम आते देखा है कोशिश रहेगी कि आगे भी जैसे हम और बढ़ते जाएंगे अपनी प्रोडक्टिविटी बढ़ाने के लिए और जितने टूल्स यूज कर सकें वो करेंगे और जैसे हमारा साइज बढ़ेगा उसका भी हेल्प होता है क्योंकि ऑपेक्स टू इनकम में इनकम का भी हिस्सा रहता है जैसे साइज बढ़ता है तो इनकम बढ़ती है तो भी रेशियोस और ठीक होती है All right, so that's uh, the bumper listing of Bajaj Housing Finance. I mean, uh, it was expected to be a good one and definitely has uh, worked up to all expectations at about 158 now. Um, 130% up and more. Shweta Daptardar is with us, Vice President of BFSI. Uh, Shweta, you heard uh, some of the things that Sanjeev Bajaj said, and of course, Atul Jain also said on how they see growth panning out. And that's really the question. Bajaj Housing Finance has had a really fast streak, a winning streak of growth in the last eight to nine years. The question is, how do you sustain that? kind of AUM growth that they've had as well and the competition that they've been seeing. Do you see that pace sustaining? Yes, definitely. Uh, we certainly believe that this pace is here to sustain. And there are two, three reasons if I could enlist here. One being the deep marketing strategy and penetration especially in the non-home loans front. So be it LRD portfolio, be it developer finance portfolio. So BHFL is poised to go deeper markets, uh, tap both internal as well as external sourcing through the enablers, through connectors, through their digital platforms, which they'll be banking upon. So there is a lot of scope there for increasing the AUM base right from the sourcing per se. Second, if you look at the entire entrenchment, so like I said, you know, a diversified portfolio mix with a strong presence pan India. So BHFL today operates out of 20 odd states in the country with a diversified mix. So as even Sanjeev Bajaj and Atul pointed out there, affordable housing finance market as we speak is 11 trillion uh, odd uh, loan market today, which is another segment which we believe Bajaj Housing Finance can do a lot of work there given the kind of risk strategy and the kind of uh, uh, inheritance they, they have in terms of risk management policies. So affordable housing finance space is going to be the second biggest trigger in terms of product diversification for Bajaj Housing Finance. And last but not the least, the execution. So look at the team, uh, you know, Atul Jain has been around for a good number of years. Uh, the entire executionary team and the kind of omnipresent strategy, which even I highlighted earlier, by, uh, by which they are banking upon the 
digital platforms, digital sourcing platforms, and this coupled with a physical branch network, which is highly penetrated, I think that will be the third biggest trigger. So we certainly believe 25 to 30 percent AUM CAGR stands imminent for next two to three years for Bajaj Housing Finance. Uh, so Shweta, so 158, 159 right now. Do you do you have a target price for uh, Bajaj Housing Finance? Yeah, it's a little too early considering that it has been a bumper listing. But yeah. yes, uh, like we also pulled out the valuations. It, it's it's been pretty expensive. Uh, but let me tell you this, uh, next two to three years, we are looking at very strong housing finance space. And as you must have heard, even Atul Jain, the kind of emphasis that has come both from the central and the state government side, the housing shortage, which we are staring at today, especially in the EWS LIG uh, category, wherein we are, we are missing out on 60 trillion incremental housing loans, which these HFCs and affordable players can bank upon. So the space looks pretty robust. Yes, uh, there are certain factors which differentiate each housing finance or each company from the other. But while coming to Bajaj Housing Finance, the premium valuations are here to stay and we continue to maintain our bullish stance. All right, so Shweta, Shweta there, very bullish on Bajaj Housing Finance. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's difficult to have any other kind of point of view on a day like there. Thank you so much uh, for speaking with us. Uh, uh, she's Vice President BFSI Lara Securities. And let's just pull up what's happening with Bajaj Housing Finance as it lists stellar bumper listing over there. Not too much that came out of uh, that mini press conference that uh, Atul Jain AMD and of course uh, Sanjeev Bajaj had, as was expected. They welcomed and thanked all the investors, etc. And that's that's a par for the course. I think the true test will be the next quarterly numbers, and that's where you know uh, we'll see whether these valuations are worth it. In fact, Harsh joining us for more on this, and Harsh, from here on, if we were to look forward, the bumper listing is done. But from here on, it becomes a question about living up to those expectations on the financials, isn't it? Absolutely, Tamana. You said it uh, six plus times in terms of one year forward price to book, certainly not cheap anymore. But uh, can this kind of valuation sustain? Mind you, the free float of the company fairly low. We did ask, or rather, we did hear the management talk about how promoter ownership will likely get diluted or will have to get diluted as per norms over the next three years. But at the moment, let's look at it for the moment 11 and a half odd percent in terms of. Uh, the free float available, but out of that, a lot of it is locked in. For, for institutions, they are unable to sell lock-in of around 3% or so in terms of uh, anchor book uh, is yet to unwind over at least the next month or even beyond. So maybe a month from now, a percent and a half of that 11 and a half odd percent will get unblocked. Currently, around 6.4% only is what is available for trading. A lot of investors unlikely to take those gains home, at least the way in which uh, uh, analysts as well as the street is viewing this stock at the moment. And therefore, the free float is going to be extremely low or the available float for sale is going to be extremely low today. A lot, uh, Very, very few people likely to book in to those profits. In fact, as per SEBI data, only 50% sell their shares on listing and likely because this is a larger group and the kind of gains Bajaj Finance has made over the years, the kind of reputation Bajaj Group has, that, that percentage may well be higher. There you go. The first anchor book opens 1.51%. Uh, which is around 12 and a half crore shares are likely to be released only on the 12th of October. So that may increase the float a little bit more, thereby uh, giving the shares a lot more stability in terms of price. On 11th of December is when the second anchor book opens. So 3% more will likely be released by 11th of December. So keep that date in mind. Of course, we'll update you on those dates as well. Uh, but that's exactly what is playing out likely on the stock price even today and will continue to play out over the next month or so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Bumper listing in focus this morning. Thank you so much, Harsh, for joining us. That's all the time we have on this edition of Talking Point. But stay tuned. A lot more coming up on the other side.